In a world where language controls the fate of us all. This gritter could change everything. How we think. How we learn. How we... live. Is it really worth the risk? A homeless man with a supernatural gift holds the key. No connections, no life skills. This is his only salvation, Jerry. Rachel, this could be his death. This could be his life. This could be my life, your life, the lives of our children. We need this. We all need this. All they need is to plug him in and download. Jerry, shut it off. It's hurting him. I can't. I can't. Rachel? Rachel! You... You killed her. You did this. You... He couldn't stop learning. All you have to do is read that word. Read the goddamn word. Uh, I... Uh, uh, I... I gotta go. Hold! Freeze! The world was not ready for his gift. Say the word, Bill. Say the word. Okay. Okay. How? Oh. oh. God damn it. You made me do this. The Scritterer. In theaters January 14th in a movie theater near you. Terms and conditions apply. Please check the description below to download the Squirter app and start learning how to read and write Chinese today with a handy 10% discount and seven-day free trial. Hello, 大家好，欢迎来到 Mandarin Monkey 广播时间 Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Mandarin Monkey podcast, episode 160. Five, 对不对？一百六十五集。对啊，今天我们有很特别的 guest， a very special guest with us。特别来宾。嗯哼，嗯、um, ，author， 作家 ，illustrator， 漫呃插画家 ，comic book creator， 漫画创作者，呃、uh, ，youtuber with over three million subscribers。嗯，拥有超过三百万订阅者的 youtuber。对啊 ，educator。教育家 ，linguist， 哦、oh, ，语言达人 ，and family man， <笑>还有也是个爸爸呢。Author of over forty books, author of、huh? author of over forty books, both comic and how-to drawing books. 嗯、mm. uh, ，including uh, mastering manga， 是、uh, ，Brody's Ghost and the drawing lesson. 好多 ，Mr. Mark Crilly, how are you, sir? Hi. Ah, <laughs> 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 thanks for having me on the show. 没关系 ，It's an honor. 对呀、啊，我们的荣幸。So how how are you today? <laughs> oh, I'm very good. I'm very good. This is fun for me. It's my first time,、uh, really, first time talking to、uh, someone from Taiwan. People who live in Taiwan、mm. uh, since like 26 years ago. Yeah, amazing. So how old are you? 对呀，二十六年以前，我两岁。你几岁？呃，我 at that at that time， 九岁。I was seven. 九岁啦。I was yeah. 我两岁，你九岁。对对。Oh yeah, two years. Yeah, nine. Yeah, you're right. You're right. 数学，数学不太好。But super interesting because we know, and we're going to dig into the history of this. Because、uh, so we accidentally,、uh, I, I say yeah, we we came across Mark came across us actually. 对。Uh, initially, uh, through uh, the podcast. 是。Uh, whilst searching for, and we had a little chat before we started the podcast. 是。Mark kind of found us、uh, accidentally while searching for Taiwanese podcast. 广播的。Yeah, that's right.、Um, and and then、uh, we posted a video、uh, on on Instagram. I think it was just a. I'm not sure what we were doing. We were playing baby baby picture. I think was it a picture?、Just、we were playing a, a game.、啊、and、uh, Mark commented, and he commented in Zhongwen, which always catches me by surprise、uh, when people do that. <laughs> and I thought, oh, this gentleman, this gentleman, right? Yeah, he can speak Chinese. <laughs> <Yeah> so <laughs> I replied, thought, hey, cool, check him out, and、uh, followed him, and、uh, and said,、mm. and I noticed that you know he's a.、Uh, A popular author and illustrator and stuff, and I thought, oh, cool, it'd be great to get this guy on. And he's lived here, so he can tell me, you know, what's going on, or what was going on back then.、Mm. So you,、um, you came over to Taiwan. Did you say twenty six years ago? Well, that's when I left Taiwan. Actually,、oh, oh. Uh, if we count further backwards, in nineteen eighty eight, the October of nineteen eighty eight was when I first 
arrived in Taiwan to teach English at the Jianghua YMCA. Oh, wait, wait. YMCA, that's so big. 他们很大哎，大家都要去外面 YMCA, YMCA。如果你去 YMCA， 你就是 the the cool one。Oh, really? 真的。Well, you you <laughs> taught at a cool school. 真的。So、oh, I'm glad to hear that. Was Taiwan your first so your first port of call? So you 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 lived in you chose like、uh, 美国 and then you、right. you thought. Uh, I'm, I need to travel somewhere. Why did you travel in the first place? Actually, that's not the either one. Yeah, you know, when、that? I was in college, I became fascinated with、uh, traveling and with、um, a, a little bit with learning language.、Mm -hmm. Although that didn't really kick in until I got to Taiwan.、Um, but yeah, I traveled through Europe、uh, and also actually got to live in Senegal in West Africa for、wow. about eight months. Wow. When I was in college, and so that was French, and、okay. I, I got fairly along with my French, but I never got fluent. Right.、Mm. And then when I was just about to graduate,、uh, I got this opportunity to teach English in Taiwan. How did but, that? And, and, but when you say first port of call, certainly the first time I had ever been in the Far East. Right. And it just. It blew me away. <laughs> right, right. And what what was so you you came in? Did you land in Taipei? Oh, you obviously, I guess you did. I did. I spent one. I think I spent one night in、uh, Taipei, and then the very next day、uh, took the bus down to Jianghua. Ah,、oh. okay. Wow, because Jianghua, ah, no, no, Taiwan, in the past, was very small, very small. I bet rare people know Taiwan, right? Until、yeah. now, because of the pandemic. Um, <laughs> right. Why? 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 Before Taiwan started to change, you know. Yeah.、Uh, and I, to be honest, I was really close to graduating from college, and、uh, I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't have a job lined up. I was a little bit panicking.、Mm. And this guy,、uh, Scott Friesner, was his name. He said, "Hey, you ought to teach with the YMCA in Taiwan. You'll love it."、Mm. And I was like, "Great." Where's Taiwan? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. No, I, just... At that time, I knew zero about Taiwan. Right, right. But then,、uh, so he set that up, got letter of recommendation, and I had a brief few lessons from a、uh, woman who was herself half Chinese, half American. Okay.、Oh. And I still remember the first five <laughs> words she taught me. I'm a Chinese-American. Of course, very important. And I learned the characters, you know.、Uh, oh. And、uh, and then from there, I studied as much as I could on my own. But really, I didn't start to learn until I landed in Taiwan.、Mm. Hang on, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. What was the other four? Not five words. I'm a Chinese-American. Oh, all right, four characters. <laughs> oh, I thought you said okay. okay. So those were yeah, those were the five、uh, words that I first learned. Did you? Really? Because every you get to Taiwan, everyone asks you, "Hey, are you a Chinese?" Every time. Every time. Are you a Chinese? Every time. 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 Um, but yeah, we, every time. <laughs> but、uh, they, I think it's because there's a, there's a big American influence over here now. Yeah.、Um, 大部分都是美国人，嗯、um, ，对，都是美国人。Yeah, it's a big American. Even actually, even I have a a part time job also teaching English, kind of. So if we again,、um, and it's always American English. So I have to drop the trousers, not literally. I have to drop saying. <laughs> <Yeah> . I have to drop the trousers occasionally and and replace the pants. Are you confessing something here?、Tom? <laughs> oh no, it's all coming out on the podcast.、Um, Was, oh, sure. Actually, thinking about it, you learning those characters. Did you say you learned? You so say you learned to say them and to write them, right? Yeah, you know, at first I didn't have anyone.、Uh, you know, I only had maybe two or three lessons with the woman.、Uh, mm -hmm. Her name is、uh, Anne Light, I believe was her. Okay.、Uh, and she,、uh, pretty soon, I was just on my own, and I, for me, that just meant 
memorizing words and studying uh, characters. So how, how much effort did you put into Dongwen, learning Dongwen before you came to Taiwan? I mean, are, is that it? You just had a few lessons and then you flew and then you came over? Or? I, you know, I put some effort into it, but I think uh, I wasn't as serious as I could be. Like, for example, I didn't even uh, learn pinyin, mm-hmm. uh, the, the Romanized writing system. Right. I wow. invent my own writing system. Nice. Why not? Why not? <laughs> Why not? It's, it's the <laughs> Just same to remind principle. myself of you know, of yeah. how uh, uh-huh. how to say this. And if something sounded like uh, like hui hui bu hui, and I would say oh hui h w a y hui yeah yeah. And, and I'd put a little fourth tone line on top of that. And that, that was my system. So in a way that's proof that alone is proof that I wasn't as serious as I should have been. Right. Right. Mm. 对, 很多, mm. 像我, 很多ABC的学生, yeah. It's still a difference when you look well, at it. Th- How actually, do I pronounce H U I? Th- there's still a very common mistake yeah. thing on passports here because they used to be a different system before Pinyin. I'm not sure if, if this was around your time when you lived it. There was like a yeah, was called, Wade Giles. I Wade think it's G- yeah, well, yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah. that guy. Um, he, <laughs> that guy. That guy. That guy. He made up his own <laughs> version of it as well. Uh, and then Pinyin came in. So a lot of a lot of people's names on their passports, including Eula's, are spelled incorrectly or spelled differently from the. The, the well, name. like, and even uh, Taichung, you guys live in Taichung. Yeah, I do. And it looks like it should be pronounced Taichung. Taichung, yeah, yes. correct. Yes. Of the, the, the bad Romanized yep. writing system. Exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly that. So you landed and you were like, this is now, I'm way out of my depth here. Because <laughs> well, you, you experienced it. You, you, sp- you spent some time in Africa, you said, right? So you already had that travel bug. You, you sort of knew what to expect when it came to different cultures and... Yeah, yeah, you know, the arguably uh living in Senegal in West Africa was even more shockingly different from where I grew up, you know, mm-hmm. in Um but there's not nothing compares with the Far East because of the writing system mm-hmm. and people are using uh quads, right? The the, yeah. the chopsticks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's so many things that are unique to the, to the Far East mm. uh, that, yeah, I, to me, it felt like the that moment in The Wizard of Oz, you know, when Dorothy opens the door and suddenly she's in this magical land. Right, right. That, that first night in, in Taipei, I was like, wow, yeah. just <laughs> Taiwan. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's super interesting. And also because you're an artist, I guess you have like a, your, propen- your propensity to learn the characters must be easier. I, I don't know. You mentioned in one of your videos, you don't have a photographic memory for, for stuff like, for like art. Yeah. Um, so you like to copy or you like to use like visual mediums to like, you know, to stimulate your drawing. Is that right? Am I off there? Did, does that... Did that have any impact well, I on your? Think I, I guess probably what I was saying there is I can't just look at a horse, let's say, yeah. and then memorize the anatomy right. perfectly in the brain, and then sit down with a piece of paper, draw it, man. and draw a horse. And I need to be looking at what we call reference, right? Photographs uh, of horses. Yeah. But certainly, as an artist, I was really into Chinese characters and, and to this day, they're just so beautiful. Mm. Uh, and I, I think, you know, in a way the whole world should be grateful that the Chinese uh, developed this writing system. It's the most, you know, beautiful writing system on earth. I think it's every one of them is like, like a little piece of art. And traditional. Cause you came to Taiwan, right? So it would have been traditional from the, the, the get go. That's right. That's right. And I, I, I can't, I can't read the, the simplified. Uh, simplified. There you go. But I don't think they look good. There's no, there's not much story behind the simplified, right? Yeah. Like, no, well, I have... told you, like, what's your name? Guo Ren. Mm. The character Guo, mm-hmm. right? I memorized that way of writing it. And when I see, you know, cause in Japan, they do the same thing. They simplify right. that. Mm. And I'm like, no, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> not, right. not right. It's so beautiful. The original one is so much more beautiful than right, the right. simplified. Now there are people who say, no, traditional. Yeah, too hard. Too difficult. 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 Too diffic
you're coming from different perspectives, aren't you? So, so Mark's coming more from the artistic side and this is yeah. actually like, there's a, there's a story behind this and there's a beauty to yeah, the way these, these characters are. Yeah. Most like learners though are a bit like this is just too difficult. I can't just wrap my head around why I should remember. 对，其实其其实 traditional， 你你要知道很多的故事，你会从那个字里面看到故事。像 there's a really popular famous example like heart， 呃、uh, ，爱 ，love， 爱 ，this word、mm.。Because in traditional there's a actual there's actually a heart radical。Huh. In traditional,、yeah. but in simplified,、yeah. there isn't.、Mm. There's male C.、Mm. So, oh, no, <laughs> no heart.、Oh. Yeah, so your love doesn't have a heart.、Yeah. Oh, that's that's good. Good. The male C. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 对啊，所以很糟糕啊。<laughs> <laughs> 对啊，所以有些人就他们在学 traditional. Uh, they just want to learn how to write. They don't、mm. want to know. They don't really want to, you know, get into the story. Yeah, exactly. 太难了，对啊。So、yeah. you you got here and uh you only know how to say 我是美国美国人。Uh, how did you order food? <laughs> <laughs> well,、Point. you know, I was in, I was in the Zhanghua YMCA,、uh-huh. and so uh, you know, uh, I was taken care of、okay. uh, in that way. But and this, you know,、uh, you you guys gave me some questions, and one of my answers to one of your questions is going to relate to this. I really jumped into making friends with Taiwanese people, and I didn't hang around with the Americans. Love you for that. I love、yeah. you for that. That's the best way. Young, young. That's the way, right?、Mm-hmm. That's how you. Yeah, the the exact exact same thing. Because you and Americans together, you really want to use English. Yeah, it's all English. You don't want to say Chinese. Exactly. That's the problem. If you want to learn the language, you need to be surrounded by it, right? And if you have too many Weigor and、um, Panya, they will speak English. They will use only English. And and actually,、right. for for me, it was a little bit. It's a little bit more extreme than that. I feel. I felt. I felt. I came here when I arrived here. I, I came to learn Zhongwen, and、yeah. uh, so my motivation was to come here, work, get a job, and just learn Zhongwen. And、uh, a lot of foreigners come here to have fun, travel, mess around, go to parties、yeah. and whatever that kind of stuff. And I just wasn't into that. That culturally, I wanted to get away from it, you know, from England. Yeah, I know what it's like to be in a pub and have a party. I didn't want to be there. I just wanted, you know, so、um, 不一样的生活 right? right. 嗯，对啊，对啊。嗯 ，Well, and especially if you only have one year, let's say, right, in Taiwan,、mm. you you really are wasting it if you don't make a lot of Taiwanese friends and really experience the real Taiwan.、Mm. Right. I feel. I feel sad for someone who who spends their whole time in Taiwan hanging around with Americans. Right, it's、mm. uh, they're not getting the full experience. No, they're just being in America, but in a different place, right?、Mm. But then you know what I mean. It's <laughs> kind of the same thing.、Yeah. So you. Yeah. That you in Taiwan, you think making friends to make、uh, making friends is 简单还是难？很简单呢、啊。真的吗 ？Taiwanese people are so friendly. Because he is Americanized. Yeah, but some people see Americans. Even not just my girl, just white girl. They will say, "Oh, I want to say English." Then they will go, "Hmm, no." Then they will stay away. I don't want to say English. Oh, see, I had the opposite experience, and this might be something a little bit different from the time. The time. From 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 the time. 真的，其实其实，在超市是一样的、啊。如果我跟你去超市、嗯，他们不会来跟你讲话。但是你一个人去超市，他们就会啊，嗨、啊， yeah. Hi, 你是你怎么在这里 ？Yeah, it's weird. You're, you're right. It's kind of、uh, it's like a cele- being a celebrity without having been a celebrity. Like you, lots of people stare at you for various reasons. <laughs> um, it's way less in Taipei now, but in Taichung, it's still pretty prevalent. You know, if you're a foreigner, they'll sort of stare, stare, <laughs> 一直看，一直看，一直看。对，对。Usually, just because they don't see many, not out of maliciousness, I don't think. How much is it? How? But I think you know, and if a foreigner is in Taiwan and they've never been to, say, Japan,、mm. they might not understand that the, this friendliness of the Taiwanese is really a great thing.、Mm. Uh, because I lived in Taiwan, or you know, I went to Japan after living in Taiwan, and especially the area of Japan that I lived. It was way harder to make friends, and you know, you know, Americans in Taiwan would complain. Oh, everyone's always staring at me. Everybody always wants to talk to me.、Mm-hmm. Uh, but 
you shouldn't complain because <laughs> I went to Japan and no one would stare at me. No one would talk to me. And、uh, it was way harder to learn Japanese at that time. So they don't want to make friends with you, or they just. Yeah, I think it's maybe what you were talking about a minute ago. That kind of、uh, how do you say hi, hi, show. Oh,、uh, right. Too shy, too embarrassed. Yeah.、Uh, to initiate any kind of a conversation. But in Taiwan, I just felt every day I was meeting people. I, one time I was riding the bus. This will make you laugh because I would take the bus from Zhanghua to Taichung, and it was the Ilin R. Was、oh, the number、Ilinger. of bus? I always remember Ilin R. I always the, took that bus from my school to my area. Yeah, Ilin R. Yeah. So I would. I was on the Ilin R bus, and these、uh, these two、uh, women behind me just just started talking to me, and we became really good friends. And we, I used、right. to go to Taichung and hang out with them, and we would go do stuff and. Oh, that's the only time in my life I've met someone on a bus like that, right? Right. And became genuinely close friends. Would they speak English or Chinese, or both? Mostly Chinese. Really? So, so at that point, you could have a conversation in Chinese, or yeah, I got I got pretty good. I thought you know within the first two three months, and I think I showed you guys this little handmade dictionary thing.、Mm-hmm. Where I would write down all the words that I learned, so th-、right. uh, and that helped me. That really did help me、um, improve pretty quickly. We're gonna get. In, we should. Now, I'll be still very young. Chinese, I forgot too much. Yeah, too long. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while, right? Definitely. But we should get into that. We should get into that. How did you? So when you when you landed, how did you study? Because that's super important. A lot of people listening are gonna be. That's gonna be really super valuable for them. Yeah.、Uh, especially because you probably didn't have the technology. Twenty six years ago, that we have now,、um, yeah, and the resources available. Yeah, yeah so may or Google Translate. Do I ask? You, you went old school. So what old school <laughs> methods did you use to improve your Zhongwen? <laughs> well, honestly, it was it was mainly the the social method of hanging out with people, and then when when you whenever I learned a new word, I would write it down. And but my feeling is more than with like books and and just. Study cards or whatever,、mm. interacting with a real person.、Mm-hmm. Those words, those new words that you learn, mean something, right?、Mm. And so it sticks in your brain. And、uh, I would say almost everything I learned was from people. Now, there's the drawback because the ordinary person is not a professional Chinese teacher. Correct, right? And you've got to be on the ball when you write this stuff down. And I think to this day there are a lot of Chinese words that <clears throat> I'm not 100 sure I memorized the tones correctly or memorized even the f- the full pronunciation of the word because you know like in and in、mm. sound similar. Yeah,、right? in and ing.、Mm. Yeah, and yeah. so、uh, there's a, there's a lot of times where I'm not sure is it in way or in way. I think it's in way. <laughs> Right, right, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, 而且 like native speakers, they don't, they will be lazy. They will say English. Which one which, is it? Y I N or Y I N G? We we talked about this a hundred times. And the Taiwanese accent, Taiwan's Chinese, like, 对，会有台湾老师，老师 instead of 老师，对，他们的 S N S H. 他的妈妈，他他阿妈，他会他会说 instead of 喜欢， she would say 喜欢。<laughs> Xi Huan. <laughs> It's like this old, older person pronunciation of Xi Huan.、Mm. It confu- c- catches me by surprise every time she uses it. Yeah. You know. Like, And they also say. The, the only Chinese I know is the Taiwan version of Chinese, right?、And、so to me, so. The, like the Beijing style sounds weird. Like when I hear someone <laughs>、yeah. say, "Sure, well, sure, <laughs> sure, sure,、well, sure. sure. Yeah, you know,、right. and I'm like, no, no, it's sub 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 sub. Yeah, sub sub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sub. Yeah, forty four. Sub 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 sub. 四十四 ，forty four。You you never know it's forty four. Yeah, yeah, you never know if it's fourteen or <laughs> which one. Yeah, I was stuck on whether it was it was April or October for a long time when someone say 四月 or 四月 ，huh? 四月，四月。Yula, you know. when you're teaching a class to someone、mm. who's trying to learn Chinese, do you have to focus on the sort of mainland Chinese 
that maybe they want to learn? Or do you just use your own Taiwan style? I use my own Taiwanese accent. <laughs> I, I will say that it's, it's not relaxed though, you know, so she will use, she definitely won't use Beijing style Zhongwen, but you, you will, you will pronounce shi, you won't say si. Even if you want me to have a Beijing ver- version class, I can't do it because that's Cause not, not my name. I suppose it's like asking natural. me to teach American English. You can do it because yeah, you know most of it. But right? to use the accent would be weird for me. I can teach American English. Tom, wait, Tom, I've heard you do an American accent. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> it's working. It's because I do those silly adverts now at the front yeah. end of the podcast every time. Yeah.我不会，因为我觉得如果我的学生来找我当老师的话，他们是喜欢我的accent，我的腔，他们不是因为我是中国人，所以我来。Oh. So I will, I will stick with uh, tra- uh, Taiwan's accent. So yeah. I don't want to change. I love, I love the sound of the Taiwan accent, you know, mm. and it sounds more relaxed. And when I hear this kind of, you know, don't they like in Beijing, uh, they would add this kind of er sound like sh- <laughs> uh, <do> I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not used to that, you know. It's just a child. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, kind of Taiwan, there's a music to the Taiwan style. Yeah, mm. Tongyi and the ah, ah, this la. sound. Actually, our daughter uses it now so much. This, you know, this, this. It's not even a word. It's just a sound the ah sound, at the end. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, mm. Where are we? Study. Right. Yeah. So you, uh, did you have any lessons when you were here? You just use the social aspect. So you were a big fan of the, uh, like. 自然的, like natural way. Yeah. You, 就是跟朋友, immersion, then. essentially. So you, you want to be surrounded by it. So you made some Taiwanese yeah. friends and did you say to them, I don't want to speak English. Can we use as much Dongwen as we can? Uh, and then w- when they use Dongwen and they, and they say something like, you know, blah, blah, blah. Turtle, and you're like, oh, wait, wait, what do you, what do you, what do you say? Can you say that again? How, what was the process of you literally writing these down? I know that sounds like you silly. Ask why? Yeah, I think, you know, I had this book with me, and especially in the early months and weeks, everyone knew that I was trying my best to learn. So they were patient with me as I would sort of stop and have them repeat a word and I'd write it down. But I think I was kind of selective in choosing the friends who would speak 100% Chinese right. to me. Right. Like if you meet someone who's super interested in learning English, Mm -hmm. you probably have to work out some sort of trade. Right. Right. We'll speak an hour in English, you know, and then then we'll speak an hour in Chinese. Mm -hmm. I just I think I always chose the friends who just would always speak Chinese anyway. How how did you get to the level where you could tell them, right, can you just speak Zhongwen and and I'll try my best to understand. Like, and, and, and how did you get over the frustration of not understanding? Um, oh, I remember though sometimes when the conversation would go a hundred percent into Chinese and I was lost mm. and I would sit there feeling a little sad. Sure. But, you know, I think part of it was just me saying, I have no right to tell these people um, speak more slowly or, you know, make it easy for me to understand. I just sort of jumped in the deep end, you know, and tried my best. It's, it's hard to explain, but I think even when you know just a few words, uh, if you really are spending all your time with Taiwanese people Mm. outside of the classroom or outside of your work or whatever, I found that, uh, you could, you could start to understand and you could, and they, people who liked interacting with you uh, really enjoyed your attempt to speak Chinese with them. And they encouraged you a lot. You know? Yeah. Mm. Actually, you know, I find it fascinating here as well. I don't know if you found it's back in 26 years ago, back in the, I was, I was thinking about back to the future then. I was always saying <laughs> how you found it back to the future. Um, uh-huh. The, when you say anything here in time, cause I've been here for a number of years now and, uh, and anything I say in the shop, if I'm on my own, for example, if I just say, we are died, and that's like a very, very natural thing for me because I go to the shop a lot, go to the chow and she out my dong shi. like one more, like, do you want a bag or something? And I say, we are died. And they go, oh, you're Dongwen son, how? And I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> I just said, we are died. Do you know what I mean? Anything you say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
，只只有说，只有说谢谢而已。<笑><笑>对啊，对啊。Yeah， 他们会给你很多。你怎么知道我会讲？我我还没有说什么。<笑> right？ 对。So yeah, that's amazing. Was it like that back then as well? Was that the same thing? Oh yeah. You just say. I think it was even more so. Probably people were were amazed if,、mm. if you could say anything in Chinese, and、uh, they would praise you. Yeah. You know? And in fact, early on, I learned to I learned the phrase "nida zui ba hen tian." Oh, oh sweet mouth. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. Yeah. You like to say good things. Yeah, you're really good at flattering me. And why? And why did you learn that, Mark? <laughs> why, why, for what reason? Flatterer as well, probably. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. So going back, I just want to go back to this very briefly, just because、um, I think people will find it very useful.、Um, I've had, I've certainly been in this situation where, and I'm a big fan of of what you're saying. The method you're using is basically just jump in and speak it.、Um, and and often I'll do it with Eula even now. I mean, a, a lot of my time is spent speaking English because of the kids. I have to be their their anchor in English,、uh, and、yeah. also my day job as well. You know,、uh, teaching English, I have to do it a lot. So、right. whenever we do get to speak Taiwan, and Eula usually speaks to me in Taiwan, but I rarely get to speak it. What I like to do is tell you, like, right, just talk Jong Wen at me. Just speak it at me, and let's have a conversation about whatever is going on,、yeah. whether we're playing、yeah. a game or doing whatever, blah blah blah, and and just do that. So, but I do remember having very many、um, instances where I'm just lost. I'm like, oh god, okay, I don't really understand what Tingbo Dongni.、Uh, I don't want her to become frustrated. So I'm like, okay, I need to. What what do you what did you、stop. do during these <laughs>、mm. situations? And and when someone says something you didn't know, you wrote it down in the book. Did you ask them again? And you said you didn't. You didn't want to interrupt their conversation too much. Did you just write down what you thought you heard and then what you think it means? Or I would, I think it probably would be words that kept coming up again and again, and I, I would selectively say, okay, this is one worth learning. I've heard this so many times,、mm. right? And so then, then I would stop them. And I wouldn't just—I would have them say it. And、uh, I, I found people were very nice about you know teaching you. Uh, and I would be, you know, like zui ba. Is it zui ba or zui ba or you know, what are the tones there? And like, even then, I'm not really sure. Maybe、mm. you can tell me now, Yula. Is it zui ba? Zui ba. Yeah, that's the, the first, first time. time. First time. Yeah. And so, yeah, people were very patient with me as I would sit and write these things down. I, I was probably.、Um, Slightly annoying to be around the first、uh, few weeks or months because I was constantly with my notebook and everything. Right,、um, I, I didn't push it too far, and、uh, I think it's really there's just there's the reward once you finally do start to understand something, and, and especially I love it when you get to the point where you can make a joke,、uh-huh. right? And everybody laughs, and then you feel like, oh, now I'm really <laughs> doing something with this language, right? right? I still get. You 也是啊，你也很喜欢跟我妈妈开玩笑。Yeah, yeah, I do. My mom takes everything seriously. Yeah. So every time when he 他讲一个笑话、mm. ，she'll be like, <laughs> "Oh, 真的吗？真的？真的？什么？我开玩笑，我开玩笑。开玩笑。对，开玩笑。但是我啊，他开玩笑吗？ Like even like saying <laughs> "kai wan xiao," she still takes it really、yeah. seriously. Very hot one. But now she thinks that's a trait of all people from England. <laughs> yeah, English and Hansi wan kai wan xiao. Yeah, yeah. Really, and we love sarcasm as well. So it's it's. Difficult. 可是 sarcasm 在中文其实蛮难的。This, yeah, 英文到中文是很难， yeah. 因为大家会说。啊、你在讲什么 ？It's taken you years to get the sarcasm. <laughs> sarcasm is tough in any language, right? <laughs> Right, is feeling. It's a feeling. It's a feeling. Yeah, 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 it's a Yeah, yeah, this quite in all every respect. One of, like one of the few ones that I can think of where you have to sort of juggle in your brain is when you do a comparison, like ta bi wa gao. Yeah, yeah, right. So in English, that would be he more than I is tall.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. That's like a juggling of word order. Yeah, yeah. Now in Japanese, everything is like that. Every <laughs> sentence you make is like that. Really. So. 
Chinese by comparison is like, oh, so nice. <laughs> you can guess, you know, I went to the store, right? Mm. Watch you, you know, and then you you just sort of plug in each word that you uh, have memorized, right? Right. And even you don't have to conjugate, went, right? You just say chu. Yeah. Shi. Yeah. So what can what chu? Mean can what yao chu, you know? Not having to conjugate verbs, that's incredible, man. That's when. so <laughs> yeah. right. Right. So you got to love uh, Chinese in that regard. I can't think of other ones. Can you, Yula, can you think of the, or, or Tom, mm. like Ta Bi Wong, Gao, that, that sort of word order. Well, where, they're, they're ve- where they're very different bars and is, 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 it's not, like, doesn't exist. <laughs> It doesn't exist. Well, like, well, one that's a little bit like is like xi bu xi huan. Like you learn right. xi huan, and that seems like a single word, but you have to learn this. No, you don't say xi huan bu xi huan. You have to say xi bu xi huan. Xi bu xi huan. Yeah. You have to break the xi huan into two parts and just do the xi bu xi huan. You know, uh-huh. and once you've memorized that formula, then you can start to yeah. This yeah. patterns for sure. In, in a way, it works. Yeah, but it just you know yeah. that kind of. We, it's not exactly the same as in English, but once right. you've memorized it, you're good. Yeah. Right, 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 there are definitely right, right. patterns, right? There are right. definitely logical patterns within right. English and Dongwen. Right, right. But then there, time, time's a bit of a difficult one, I think. Time. Yeah, like, time like, for example, if you can ask a question like, when did you go? Sure. Like, when did you go to America? Oh. You'll use it in different sense. You'll use it in a different order than English. Oh, do I? Well, we don't always put the question words at, at the, the f- in the beginning. At the beginning, in, right? So yeah, when we be, beginning. do you know what I mean? You, so yeah, there are some there are some marked differences, I think. Yeah. But if once you know you understand those structures, you will feel oh, very simple. Yeah. Yeah. Very simple. And also, it's very um useful because everyone will say this. Like, 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 对, so you can admit you can just leave leave with it. Yeah. But you're saying in Japanese, everything's different, right? 对, 对, Every, like I was just telling you about like the I went to the store right. in Japanese. Uh Watashi wa ni ano omise ni ikimashita. Right? So it'd be say I store to went. I st- oh, right. literally oh. almost every part of it is flipped around, and oh, that's a simple yeah. sentence, right? At least so it you starts with the subject. When it starts to get more complicated, yeah. that's why Japanese is a lot harder because you have to you have to almost strategize before you open your mouth. So you, you have to and, like literally break the logic of your mother tongue mm. to yeah. start again, basically just forget it and start again because right. you're not right. right. That's wow. tough. That's tough. 对啊，我那时候学日文的时候，我也是很崩溃。嗯、mm. ，I was like， 哦，这到底是什么东西？为什么日文这么难？太多 you know, 太多的 structure。Here's an example of how、uh, I might have done in those early days, because she said about Japanese， 很崩溃。What did you say？ 崩溃 ，Yes。So okay, now there's a word that I've never heard before, and I would probably say "bong kui, bong kui." You know, help me out. You know, and I'll write that down and try to understand what does that mean. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think a lot a, enough Taiwanese people know some English that they can. You know, and、Same. I probably carried the dictionary around with me, and I would I would try to figure it out. But、uh, that's you know. So what does "bong kui"? What does that mean? Oh, it's make you break down. Make you break down, like、uh, just like, like oh, this is so difficult. Are you going to explode? Bong kui, there. Yeah, well, I've turned this into a, a Mandarin lesson. Yeah, I'm getting a free. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs>、uh, <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. Did your friends speak any English, or did they speak any English, or was their English okay, or or not at all? Yeah. How do they? Did how do they at, explain things to you if they need? Yeah, but、to? if they don't know, I did. If they didn't know English. I Sometimes you know, and I showed you these little notebooks that I wrote.、Mm. Sometimes I would actually get bad information because what what they thought it was in English was not the actual word in English, and then maybe looking it up later, sometimes years later,、right. I'd find out. Oh, I memorized that wrong. That doesn't have the meaning that I thought it had.、Yeah. So this whole this sort of social method of learning Chinese. Has some drawbacks for sure,、mm. with you getting things a little bit wrong, maybe getting the pronunciation wrong sometimes. But it's just so much fun, man! I can't imagine <laughs> learning Chinese from books when I can learn it from people, from 
spending the day, you know, cow roll, you know, they go to a barbecue, barbecue yeah. and, and you have all these happy memories and, you know, it smells so nice. And then the person says, Han Xiang, Han Xiang, you know, and you're like, oh, okay, that must mean smells good. You know, so you write it down, Xiang mm -hmm. smells good. You know? And then forever, almost you, when you use the word Xiang, you remember that time at the barbecue Damn. and the person who you and it brings a smile to your face. Yeah. That's the best. That is okay, the best. Okay, can you see his yeah, yeah, it's passion. Yeah, yeah, yeah your yeah. passion with the language is good. And I think this method, you you meet friends, and then you learn Chinese with Taiwan this this method is you need to be very confident. Like you really, really, really want to learn Chinese well. You need to be confident. You need to be passionate. 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 Like enjoy it, even though yeah. you have the you know you have hard time understanding people. 但是你还是觉得 I can do this. 我可以做得到 Yeah, there's a huge difference between sitting in a classroom learning like why ba. You have to put ba in this sentence versus being at a barbecue and making memories whilst learning words. Like, you're gonna remember remember these words 很像 way longer than you remember why ba is in. You know, grammatically has to be in this place. 对对对 Uh, it's the best. Yeah, method. yeah. The pa being passionate about it is really the first step. You all, you almost have to be a little obsessed, sure. I think. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're not going to learn it casually by studying every once in a while. You just got to be like laser focused. Like you can't rest until you've right. learned all these things so that you can start taking part in the conversations. Yeah. Mm. So we, we often suggest that to, to our, even to Mandarin monkey students and, and people who come and hang out with us at the weekends and stuff to use the don't want, just find someone to spend some time with. It, it could be a teacher yeah. if you want to, and just chat, like yeah. find something you're interested in and just try and have a, a the longest conversation you possibly can. Just yeah. yong zhong wan, hendo, 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 hendo. I yeah. keep using it every single day. It's actually the same advice you came, you, you gave for people who want to start drawing, right? And how to get better at drawing is to just draw something every day. Is draw something. Absolutely. No, I think it's true of almost any skill that you want to acquire. Mm. This, uh, I call it creative tunnel vision, right? You just really almost have to reach a level of obsession where you're doing it all the time and throwing all of your energy into it. Right. And that's when you really start to see progress. Not magically, you know, just over, it takes weeks and months or whatever. But if you keep at it and you're putting that many hours in, you're going to get better. With, with Chinese or Japanese, have you ever hit like a plateau of language where you thought, uh, you know, I, I can speak okay. I can have a general level conversation in, in these languages, but I don't feel like I'm progressing anymore. Have you ever reached that stage? And, and how did you get over that, if, 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 if at all? <clears throat> Yeah, that's an interesting question. I I don't know if I had that experience of a, a plateau or whatever, mm. or hitting a brick wall right. with the language. But again, I was I, I'm not I'm never holding myself to this highest standard of being perfectly fluent. Right, right. I think with Chinese, the the written language in particular, that's like the Mount Everest of <laughs> written languages. Right, it's like. A, there is no harder language to learn how to read and write. Mm. And so I think both in Chinese and Japanese, when it comes to characters, Chinese characters, or, you know, the Japanese say kanji. kanji. Mm. I probably am at a kind of a permanent plateau with that. I can't sit down and read a newspaper. Right. Right. But, you know, but if, if I see a comment and, you know, this is something I was going to talk about later if we get into these questions that you ask, yeah. But if, like, these days, something like Instagram, when you uh, read a comment, and you can do like you said, Google Translate and so forth, yep. Um, that can be a great way of improving your ability to read. Mm. And of course, you're not really writing it by hand. You know, you're, nowadays the the Type software it. is helping you, right? Yeah. Um, as you type in the pinyin or whatever. Mm. Um, but again, it's social, right? Because on Instagram, you feel like you're relating with somebody on the other side of the globe. Yeah. And, and sometimes even you you succeed in making a joke, right? A written joke yeah. using Chinese or, in, or Japanese in my case. Um, it's kind of the same thing, but in written form, it's the same kind of social mm. uh, studying. Absolutely. Do you, so uh, let's touch on this very quickly because I do want to ask you these questions. There's 10 of them though. So maybe we just ask the 
。就是我对来二十六年前的台湾是怎么样很有兴趣、欸。I know.、Oh, right. <laughs> 怎么办？我们好多东西哟、哦。<laughs> too much to talk. So, <laughs> but I did, I did want to get into bilingual families. 好，所以要哪一个先？ Let's make sure we talk about both of those things. <laughs> right, right. So, can I, can I, can I do that? Now? Do you have any one team, more one teas? 我我想要知道二十六年前的台湾是怎么样。Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, ask. Okay, okay. So, what was it like? Twenties. It was Taiwan. Like you said, it was a very friendly place, full of friendly people. You made a lot of friends.、Uh, a lot of people stared at you, but in a kind of nice way.、Um, it was, you know, much more sociable place. What else? What else was good? We, we, we're going to get into the bad things because I'm interested by that too.、But、what? What was?、Uh, what other good things were there about Taiwan? Twenty. It was almost all good stuff, to tell you the truth. I loved Taiwan. I really did.、Yep. And especially living in Jianghua. You guys have been to Jianghua, right? Yo, yeah. Yo. So it's a smaller city and、um, just more laid back feeling there,、um, and I loved you know, getting on my bicycle and riding out into the rice fields and、oh, nice. that kind of stuff probably hasn't changed, you know. But I would I would guess based on what I've looked at on the internet that things like the the train stations、mm-hmm. have probably been rebuilt since then, right?、Mm-hmm. Changhua、yeah, and Taichung had、mm-hmm. pretty old kind of you know peeling paint. Type of train stations that may have gone back to the fifties、mm. or sixties or something. Who knows?、Uh, and so I bet you that's changed. And I don't. The train tracks and your ability to get from Taichung to Taipei, it, it's got to be a lot faster now than it was back then. Yeah, 现在我们有高铁是 HSR high speed rail. How fast can you go from Taichung to Taipei? Uh, one hour. Yeah, it it, it the fastest it, on the Gao Tian, right? Yeah, yeah. The fastest is thirty minutes. Yeah, 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 thirty minutes. Uh, it t- yeah, it took hours, like you said. It is probably faster than going by car, but not、right. a whole lot. Right. Well, there's something kind of nostalgic about that time, you know. I think, and uh, I uh, uh, I loved going to places like Lu Gang. Lu Gang. Am I saying that right? Yeah. 好多美食，好多吃的。Yeah. And the history, you know, the beautiful old buildings. And the, you said the Lu Lu Gang.、Uh, what do they call it? The Niu、yeah. Shebing. Niu Shebing. Niu Shebing. Yeah, that's right. Niu Shebing as a local the snack. The Kao Tong cake. Yeah. 对，但它不是、so、它不是真的是 Kao Tong， 它是看起来像。Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, that actually triggered my my next question. Did you try Chao Tofu? <laughs> 你吃过吗？炒豆腐。The stinky tofu. Yeah. 你你吃过吗？ And you know, my theory is it's stinky when they're making it, but it's not stinky when it's right there in front of you after it's been cooked. My remembrance is the, the cooking <laughs> process. So if you're sitting there at the what do you say? The yes,、yeah, sure, the night market. Night market, yeah. If you're near the place where they're making the chow dou fu, 真的很臭，对，臭。<laughs> uh, I've always felt that that it was the cooking process that was really stinky, and that the the, the tofu itself, I kind of liked it. I thought. How, it, how did、I、you find the eating process? You see, mom. The eating process. Yeah, because the cooking process stinks. You see, mom. You see, mom. There's some foods that don't even have Mandarin names for them. Like,、uh, am I saying this right? Oatsen. That that was my nickname when I was young. The the oyster that was your nickname. <laughs> yeah, oyster, oh, I did. An oyster dumpling or something. An、uh, oyster. Uh, mm, well, it's not dumpling. It's omelet. It's omelet, right?、Mm. Oyster omelet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, I did. And I think was that famous in Jianghua, maybe or some. It seems like they had a lot of it. Many, many. Jianghua has many. The, the, the Jianghua Rou Yuan. Yeah, Bao Wan. 嗯，我们喜欢说 Taiwanese because so local. Bao Wan. Bao Wan. Yeah, I did, I never learned to speak Taiwanese completely, but I learned just a little bit. Like Jin Ho Jia. 对，真好吃。吃加巴贝，加巴贝，嗯，加巴贝。It's like greeting. 嗯，对。
。嗯 ，Zaya， is that when you say I don't know？ 嗯 ，Zaya， Zaya， 对，哎，很好哎、嗯，你可以跟我妈妈说话。<笑> yeah， you can speak to、uh, yeah. her mom. Funny these things stay in your memory， you know， and even just talking、uh, with you guys now， I feel like some of it's starting to come back， some of the shiny、嗯。对呀、啊，对呀。I don't know. Did I answer the question about how different things were? I just the pace was slower. I think there probably was more of that. Oh my goodness! And why go and now it's like you're a celebrity and people wanted to have their photo taken with you、mm. and、um, you. And yeah, I mean, there was a time when my friends and I really early on we went to a restaurant way out in the countryside and we. Ordered the food as best we could, and then they started bringing us dishes that we had not ordered, <laughs> and we were like, "No, no, no, no! This we didn't order this." And, the, and finally, in the end, we understood they were giving it to us for free. Day. Oh wow! Because they were so happy to have the yeah, Lao like, Wai yeah. come to their、uh, restaurant way <laughs> out in the countryside. Yeah, they are. I think it's. A, I, I feel like it's a slightly different. Feeling now with being out in the country, especially out in rural areas in Taiwan, there's not a great deal of love for foreigners in the in the, in the rural areas now. I think it's area. The problem is like Taiwan. Taiwan doesn't have so many local friendly people. But if you go to Zhanghua, there are many foreigners who go to Zhanghua. They are very fond of Zhanghua. Yeah, I think I think we we live in the wrong area, don't we? <laughs> I pick, I, I pick the wrong area. Back in those days, with the motor scooters, right? Fewer people had cars. Everyone had a motor scooter, right? 真的。And but they a lot of people didn't wear helmets back then. 还在脏话不会。At that time, no.、Uh, there is still a lot more people wear helmets.、Um, there are still a number of idiots who don't. Uh, you see, you, sometimes you could see a family of five、yeah. on one scooter. They still, they, that still happens. That's still. Yeah, 还是有 And and the police,、um, the police don't do anything about it. How were the police? How what were the police like?、Oh, were the police?、Yeah. I mean, obviously, but did they do anything? Yeah, did I, I didn't have any interaction with the police, but I do remember the sort of ceremonial military police guys, where there were two of them,、wow. and they had these sort of. Silver helmets. Do you know what I'm talking about, Yula? The, they were like the big, and you could only be this kind of guard if you were a certain height. Now I wish I had them. Have black helmets, right? Yeah. Or black helmets. Maybe they're white helmets. They, yeah. But they phased that out, maybe. But then you you would sometimes see them in pairs walking down the street, and they seem like almost ceremonial police. This higher level.、Mm. I only seen I, that in Taipei. 对，在台北的时候有，但是在台中没有。No, we just we have gangsters.、Uh, <laughs> we have gangsters here. <laughs> It used to be when you were walking on the sidewalk、mm. in anywhere in Taiwan. Seems like to me that the, the people who owned the store seemed also to own the sidewalk in front of the store, and if they wanted their sidewalk to be higher. <laughs> Then the store next to them, they would raise the sidewalk.、Mm, yeah. So when you walk, you still have that, and you're walking、yep. along, and you're like, you have to step up and then step back down. Yeah, yeah. Yo. Mark, in, right, Mark. <laughs> okay, you just started. You, you just started like the <laughs> Bao Yuan, the Porsche, the complaint train now. So,、um, <laughs> okay, sidewalks. Let's 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 talk about that.、Um, there aren't any in Taichung, right? That they don't have sidewalks here. You you you. you Oh, there are no sidewalks. Well, when you when you when you say sidewalks in there are like the front of shops, which are at different levels, but like for exactly the reason you're talking about, people raise them and lower、uh, them.、Uh, but if you don't want to walk through people's shops, you have to walk on the road. Like there's no, there is no, you know. Yeah, that's, when I say sidewalk, I guess that's what I meant. And、right. yeah, people would park their scooters yeah, in yeah. that area. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, that's increased yeah, tenfold. To walk straight along, yeah. How 可怕！在台在台中走路真的是很可怕的一件事情。If there's a gap, if there's a space, people will put their bike in it. Yeah. If any anywhere, but it, it doesn't matter who's there. People, in the hole. If there's a hole, they will put their bike in there. Hun ha sha. It's very funny. It's great. Some things never change. No. Some things never change. It's a, yeah, it's yeah, a thing. Yeah.、Uh, right now. Parenting. You have a question? No, I'm done. Look at the time. Look at the time. It goes so quickly. Look at the time.、Um, yeah. My turn. <laughs> uh, before we started the podcast,、uh, you said that you are、um, you have a Japanese wife. Japanese wife,、right. uh, Mrs. Crilly.、Um, hi, Mrs. Crilly.、Um, and you also have two,、uh, you have two children. 
um, so right. a boy and a girl who are both, um, uh, you said one was in university and one's in high school. Is that right? Yeah. My son, oh. uh, Matthew is 21 years old. Right. He's uh, in his final year of college. Right. Or university. Uh, and, uh, daughter Mio is, uh, 14 years old and, um, in the middle of her first year of high school. And Mio is, is your, was the daughter in the picture that I, we do talked about. I think, think, yeah, you've probably seen. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, uh, so, okay. So many questions. I have not enough time, but I have so many questions. Okay. Did you, so you, you met your wife obviously in, in Japan, did you, or were you no, in, no, I oh, met her in Michigan. In Mexico, in Mexico. Oh. Okay. 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 So, uh, but she was from Japan. Yeah. Yeah. And she was the kind of person that really, if she had not met me mm-hmm. would only have briefly been in America and would have returned. Right. Right. Oh. She had the bad misfortune of running into me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I uh, proposed marriage. And yeah. so, yeah, she ended up settling down here with me. In Michigan. That was the, that's exact, basically the reverse story of us. Cause I would have come here, worked maybe for a couple of years and then left down, probably, down. but I met Eula and so reverse thing. Okay. So you met in the States and then she stayed in the States. Sure. So you raised, right. you raised your family in the States. Okay. And, and how, so you, or did you, your children, uh, your wife will speak Japanese. You said you speak, oh, I have to make up a word now. Ja- Japanese. In- Inganese. <laughs> what, what's, cause it's Chinglish. Japanese. Ja- Japanese. Yeah. Japanese. Okay. So Japanese and English. You guys speak Japanese. <laughs> oh. Is that- uh, the truth is, we do a lot like what people see you doing on your podcast. Yes. Uh, and I will, when we're talking at home, my wife and I, I, I will speak to her in English and she will answer in Japanese. Sure. So your listening, um, your listening skills better than your speaking skill, would you say? What's that? Your listening is better than your speaking in Japanese. Yeah, except, you know, it's funny with my language learning. I feel like I almost don't understand something until I can say it myself. I'm a little different from some of these other people who say, oh, I understand everything, but I can't say a word, you know, right. and that's mind boggling to me because like, I don't I memorize it until I can say it. Right. Right. Um, but I'll jump ahead into what you may want to know about in advance. And that huh. is with our kids. Yep. How did we do that? Cause they were born and raised both of them in America. Yeah. But we wanted to make sure that they didn't completely lose touch with their Japanese heritage. Now, our our theory was they are going to learn English eventually. Yep. So the first, especially with Matthew, when he was first born, he we surrounded him almost in a bubble of Japanese. Wow. And when whenever I was around him, I would speak Japanese. And of course, Miki, my wife, would speak Japanese. And then Miki had all these friends and their sons and daughters were Japanese. Okay. And it was like we created this uh, false like ecosystem <laughs> miniature <laughs> Japan surrounding our son, you know? Okay. Uh, and yeah. By the time he was four years old, he was speaking Japanese. Oh. Uh, and that was when I thought, uh-oh, he's going to go to kindergarten. So. <laughs> yep. And that's when I switched, just me, I switched at that point to speaking to him in English. Right. And so comprehension got really good. But I swear, on the first day of kindergarten, Matthew really could not speak English very well. His comprehension was great. Right. But he couldn't speak very well. Um, But sure enough, like they say, kids' brains are like sponges at that time. And within the first few months of kindergarten, he's started to pick up the English. And then I don't want to stretch this out too long, but we had the funny experience that all throughout his early childhood, he was really bilingual right. and he could flip back and forth between Japanese and English. Yeah. Mm. As he got older and older and he got to around 10 years old, 11 years old, the Japanese started to slip. Okay. And we were not like going to punish him or anything. It was just, you know, it just started to go. And then during one of these family vacations in Japan, he himself got motivated and he reversed course. And now he's perfectly fluent in Japanese. And how old is he then? 10, you say, when he flees? When he's, well, he was more like around the age of 12 or something, I think. Okay. When he, 
something inside him said, I don't want to lose my Japanese. I, so that's the kind of the, that's the process he went through with Mio. I think the, uh, the Japanese is, has started to fade a little bit, but her comprehension is, is great. And I think that if she ever chose to study it at the, you know, high school or college level, she would have a huge advantage over everyone else in class. Right. And it's, you know, she went to live in Japan, she would become fluent quite quickly, I think. And and now Miki will use Japanese? My wife? Yeah. She, yeah. she relaxes into her own language, but she can speak English when she needs to. But okay, but so but as you so you saying that during the first four years you spoke just uh, Japanese with your with your son, and I'm assuming with your daughter as well, or was that a bit more mixed? Oh, it got a little more mixed with her. Okay, um, but still, she had a lot of Japanese friends, and and she was pretty good with her Japanese uh, up until you know the school, you know, and the English really kicks in and starts to kind of push things out a little bit. Right, right. 很奇怪的问题，但是 where did the the Ruben and the Panyo come from? <laughs> well, we from live Ruben. in yeah. we live in Southeast Michigan, and there are a lot of Japanese companies. Okay, uh, there are American car companies and stuff. Okay, that do business with Japanese car companies, and so there's a lot of uh, you know, and I don't know if they they do this in Taiwan so much, but in Japan they'll they'll move a worker over to Detroit for two, three years and their family. Okay. Kind of whether they want to go or not. It's like, yeah. we're putting you in, in Detroit now. Oh. And so there's always, there's always a lot of Japanese people in the area and they're, you know, they, they have kids and that's how wow. we were able. So now, now they're sort of all grown up. They made the decision when they got a little bit older and they thought, right, I'm not letting this Wunhua, my culture slip. Uh, and yeah. they, they cracked on with the lesson, uh, the lesson, the uh, learning sure. uh, and bucked their ideas up. And now they're, they're all f- better than yours. <laughs> Matthew, definitely. And he's gotten really into studying the characters, you know, the kanji. Yeah. Uh-huh. But he, also his pronunciation, you know, you, you can hear, I love to get into the, the pronunciation and the sort of rhythm of the language. Mm-hmm. You know, and one of your questions I think you were going to ask was about advice to people studying Mandarin. Yeah, hey. question 10. Was if we're out of time, I might just jump in and answer that question. Well, please. How are? Um, but I do, I question say eight. focus on the pronunciation, especially with Chinese, focus on those tones. Mm. Because it's really important, right? If you get the tone wrong, you're getting the word wrong. Okay. And I think especially English speakers or speakers of almost any Western language, we got to be careful about the emotional use of tones because we use a, a kind of a fourth tone in English. So if you want to say that something's really good, you'll say, oh, good, it's so good, right? Mm-hmm. And that's like a fourth tone. But if you say, Han hao, you know, yeah. you're not saying you're not saying how, you're saying how. Yeah. And it's a, it's a different word. Yeah. Yeah. And so you have to kind of drain the emotion out of yourself and remember, hun hao. Yeah. And mm. don't start saying hun hao, hun hao, you know, because it's, it's going to really mess everything up. That's why <laughs> it's, it's almost impossible for me to understand singing. In Zhongwen. Anyone actually, even natives. If I listen to English songs, I have the same problem. So tone is really important. It's really important. Yeah, especially the fourth tone, this sort of Western style fourth tone of emphasis. Yeah. So you like you're telling you want to tell your child not to do something. You might be tempted to say, "Bu xing, bu xing." When you when you really want to say, "Bu xing," right? And you have to get that that Chinese way of emphasizing something without using the fourth tone. Now, I suppose the second tone is a little bit like a question in English. Really? Yeah. You know, the and upward so inflection. you got to be careful not to apply that to something. Right. Um, I, I don't know if I can think of a good, like you, you should be saying, niao shui jiao. Niao shui jiao. You know, or whatever, and you start trying to turn that into an English style question, and yeah. they're not going to know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So there is this way of like remove the emotional aspect of tones and, and start jumping into the Chinese 
way of doing it. Let me think, what else did I say about that? Oh, I said uh, one of my advice things was be careful about the difference between male Chinese and female Chinese, right? Interesting. Sometimes huh? an American <laughs> boy in Taiwan will get a, J- a Taiwanese girlfriend. He starts learning all his Chinese from his girlfriend. And he <laughs> starts picking up all these feminine ways oh, of yeah. saying. I've heard this too. We have a lot of cute words. Just to say, like double words or. Yeah, what was what, what, what the Tongshi Shoha and Tasha talk about? Well, stop saying Dweya. <laughs> and also, yeah. also waste some money. It doesn't sound <laughs> male, like yeah, because you know, and yeah, she, she, yeah, she said Chinese. that. I was like, because I, I think I, it was a long time ago, but she said, yeah, she said, oh, don't say dweya, and I was like, why? I hear it all the time, and she said because it, it's kind of just it's more females. You tend to use ah yeah. at the end of these things. Just say dwe, and I'm like, but I, wow. but I, li- I like saying <laughs> dweya. <laughs> I like I like saying it that way. It's it, yeah. It was oh, wow. <laughs> This is maybe this is, this advice is sort of you're getting into the advanced levels, but yeah. if you really want to get it right, do pay attention to that as a man. And I wonder if the same thing would happen to a, a, an American woman who gets a Taiwanese boyfriend. Would mm. she start to maybe pick up some of his male ways of talking if she's not careful? Uh, so oh, pay we'll attention to that. I guess would be my advice when you are learning your English. Uh, or learning your Chinese from mm. someone of the opposite gender. Uh, even though, like you said, it's fun. You know, I think the, the Taiwanese woman's way of talking, yeah. what do they call it? Like the sa jiao. Yeah, sa jiao. Uh, that sort of sound is kind of addictive almost. And you want to say, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like the, yeah, the, the uh, melody of yeah. it. Nice. Yeah. So, um, question. Then, mm, you uh-huh. Sorry, you saw something? Oh, the one final thing, yeah. and this for me was a little more in Japanese, but I think it also applies to Chinese. It's like, be right. suspicious of your dictionary translations of oh, things. God, yeah. And if you want to say something and you think, oh, I'll just look it up in the dictionary and, and use what it says, yeah, a God, lot yeah. of times it's wrong. Oh, the yeah, human yeah. dictionary, the human dictionary of your friend oh. is going to guide you towards what you really want to say. That's right. 他真的就是他说对啊，他他真的就是我们的皮，我们的好朋友。Yeah, it really is. 对，每一个每一个point都是。Yeah，it's I, I've got this word for this, you know, this is, this yeah. means bucket, doesn't it? No, no, no one ever says it. You have to ask a friend or someone, a native to say, do people say this? Because you're right. So don't, you don't always trust it. I agree. Google Translate. teacher, this is my, my, my sentences. Yeah. And then they put it 这是这个这个是从Google Translate来的吧 然后说对啊 yeah. yeah, you, you, just, you just said I look like a horse <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, 但是他们会stick with the word that Google Translate use 我觉得这是不太好 就是你要问然后你真的要去去 switch 你要去 to change your vocabulary list 因为有些人就会stick with the word you know, they, they, they know from Google Translate 我觉得这是不好的 yeah, mm, yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, question: Can I? Right, we're going to go soon. I, I promise. <laughs> no problem. No, I got time. I feel bad. You guys, it's it's getting late. Where you are? Hey, look, we just have, we have a newborn, so we we have <laughs> some uh, insomnia anyway, uh, because the newborn wakes up a lot. Um, so we'll be up until early hours of the morning. We won't keep you until the early hours of the morning. Um, question four. <laughs> question four. Did you have an answer for question four? Do you have a Chinese phrase, a, a favorite phrase in Chinese? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I prepared one of these. This, this is very personal. This is not like a words of wisdom or anything. This is something that Great. reminds me of Taiwan uh-huh. and something that I was taught, kind of fancy Mandarin Chinese. Mm-hmm. Someone taught me to say, Oh, this is how. One day without seeing you is like three autumns. And, and why did you learn that? Mark. Somebody, you know, it's it's one of these chance things where one of these friends thought probably it would be Mike funny. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
yeah. teach him how to say yeah. and once I memorized it it's you know it's a funny thing to pull out and it really surprises everybody need some yeah. <laughs> and sounds so advanced right, right. right. And I just like this idea of three autumns instead of three years three autumns yeah. Sun chill. That's very poetic. it's very poetic Poetic, yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I've, I've typically hear winters. I typically hear that, you know, you say, oh, he's, he's seen many winters. That man has seen many winters, but never autumns, actually, usually. I just, I've had an idea for my next advert. 因为Oten他感觉就是比较难过,比较... Um, well, to Chinese, 它是一个比较sad season. What, winter? 对, uh, no, uh, 秋天, oh, okay, 对, yeah. 所以我一天没有看到你, so they chose uh, autumn as, the sad, as a sad really? season. Really? Okay, that's, that's, that's interesting. 很美啊, 很美啊, 我很喜欢这个, mm. Cause I'm quite clean, so I like saying this, I like hearing these kind of phrases, mm. you know? Uh, it's been a long time not seeing you. It feels like it's been a three years or a thousand years. It's not how male. Sorry. <laughs> <Mei shi. laughs> and, and also question five. Um, what's one of the best investments you've ever made in your study? Oh, 学习最好的投资. Well, you know, I, I, I've kind of pre-answered this one when I talked about the little notebook, but let me describe it a little better, what it okay. was that I bought. I got this. Now you guys can see it. This is a podcast, yep. but I'll hold it up to the camera so you guys can see it. How small this thing really is. Like a little red book. Uh, mm -hmm. This little, it was meant to be for phone numbers and addresses, probably. Of course it was. Oh. It's alphabetized. And oh. that's the key. Okay. So you get the, you've got these little, you know, I'm holding it up to the camera for you. I, I sent you guys a scan, I yes, think. Yes, we can put it on the background, right? yeah. You can see the ABCs. So that way, when you write something down, like someone taught me how to say, uh, well, you know, let's say. Pick, uh, pick one out of the book. Okay. You know, huh. I would probably try to like, how am I going to remember this uh, um, one day without seeing you? So I would say one and I go to the letter O mm -hmm. and I write in English one day without seeing you is like three autumns. And then I would write and and so, of course, I'm not going to remember it right that, from one time. Yeah. But later on, when I want to remember it, it's alphabetized. Now, with phones, I'm sure there's the digital way of doing it now. Sure. But then I, I get to have the actual physical thing that That's I nice. can look at years later. And the you know, and think, oh, yeah. I remember those days, you know, yeah. it's kind of nice to have a physical object. And uh, so that, that again, it couldn't have cost more than one dollar, you know, maybe. <laughs> and that's an amazing, an amazing investment. Yeah. And, and the, 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 uh, the memory, yeah. the, the memory uh, of that physical object is awesome. I think as life is so much about stories and about yeah. recounting these things, right. right with people. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, but I would say the key thing is to alphabetize it according to your own language. Okay. And then you can go back and find the the. Would you go home you know, after you had a conversation with your friends and and look at the dictionary, your, your little your notebook, and then I might I might. It was more what would happen would be like I, a, a few days later, I might be having a conversation with somebody else, mm. and uh, you know, or whatever, and someone would come along, and you want to say how Joe Butian, and I'm like. Oh, Oh, I know something better than how Joe Bujian, you know, and I'd say, hang on, guys, and then I pull it out. And I rug the and uh, get a big reaction. Yeah. And that's when it really starts to cement in your mind, you know, because you used it for something instead of just uh, uh, the gist that made me laugh because I just visualized him being in like a, a social situation where someone sort of said, how to begin? Yeah. Like, I haven't seen you for ages. And he, you know, this crazy foreign guy pops up and says, you know, yeah. I haven't seen you for three or two. Like it's been 
It's been three autumns since I saw your beautiful face. It's just done. How shall do it? I'm just like, whoa, okay. Whoa. Who's this weird guy now? He's great. I probably didn't get the reaction that Eula would give. I, yeah. They more likely would say, Ni han kwa jang o. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Han kwa jang. You exaggerate too much. Yeah, no, I like it. But I think he's just a very nice guy. 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 就是把它变成是一个很快乐的事情，就会让你很有动力。Yeah. This is the best way to 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 make new you know, to memories, isn't it? You know, to associate with fun stuff. That's exactly what Mark was been saying. You know, has been saying earlier. I got a question for you guys, if it's okay. Oh my god! How are? Okay, so excited. One of my one of my favorite things to do back in the day, twenty、yeah. six years ago, was to go to the Chinese tea houses, and you they you would go there and they'd have little tables and it would be dimly lit. And you could pao cha, right? They bring you the little teapots and the cups、mm-hmm. and the is it guads? Oh, the, the uh seed uh 什么 seed watermelon seeds or melon seeds? 对对 Yeah, you would sit there and liao tian. You were or、yeah. just have conversations.、Mm. So my question is, do they still have those now in Taiwan? Or, 有 or have they gone away? 有啊 Yeah, still have them. Yeah. 嗯只有现在，嗯，在台北很多，台北像那个 ，can't remember 九份，在呃、uh, ，there's a there's a place in Taipei called 九份，他们有很多的 tea houses there， 然后你可以去那边就坐着，然后你要说我喜我想要喝 ，for example， 呃，乌龙茶，他们就会在你旁边帮你泡乌龙茶，嗯，然后会有一些 snack like seeds， 呃，南瓜、瓜子一些，然后你就可以 like 去。Enjoy 去享受看着台北的风景。台南有没有？台南也有。现在很多人的家里 ，in、mm-hmm. uh, families， 他们也都有啊。Yeah. 对啊，像我爸爸以前 in the past， 他很喜欢泡茶。嗯、mm-hmm.。And he also like to collect the wooden table， 然后要有放一个茶几 ，like tea set， 然后再再是跟朋友一起聊天，一起泡茶。Mm. So this is. I love that. I, I love that tradition. You know、mm. that relaxed tradition, and the, the,、uh, very often they're playing the traditional music,、right. and it's almost designed. You know, you step off of this modern polluted street with all these motorcycles, and you go through these doors, and it's like you've stepped back into the nineteenth <laughs> century、uh, China or something, and、yeah. you hear the music, and like I said, sometimes they. Were quite elaborate with the architecture, and there were like different levels, and they'd create these separate little areas where you could sit with your friends.、Mm. And one of my favorite snacks. This is not traditional. This is probably not traditional at all. But they had the hua sheng、uh, toast, the,、oh, the peanut peanut butter, butter toast. Ah, do you know what I'm talking about? Really thick slice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like and the hua sheng jiang the hua sheng jiang toast. 哎 ，It's like toast. It's it, it's basically toast. Cooked in peanut butter, no? Ah,、uh, you've seen it. But like sweet peanut butter, maybe they, maybe it's not popular anymore because you know, I can tell from Eula's face、mm. she doesn't、Eula. know what we're talking about. You had it. It was so delicious. They got to bring it back. They got to bring it back. It was、yeah. so good.、No. It's not traditional Chinese. No, I don't. But you、so. know the, the whole process of pouring the tea and you have to warm the cups up, and there's this like slowing down, you know,、okay. and. Appreciating this quiet time to just talk, I really loved that. 嗯，在台北他们有茶的课，就他们会教你怎么泡茶。Yeah, teach you how to do it, right? 对，然后会教你认识那些 tea set 那些名字，然后教你怎么泡乌龙茶，怎么他会告诉你故事。Like why do you need to do these rings? Why these steps? 他们都会告诉你很多很多。就是泡茶的课程 ，sounds very relaxing.、Yeah. It's kind of like a meditation, isn't it?、Really? 而且他是 business friend， 就是你如果想要去去呃、uh, ，to talk 呃、uh, ，business to talk about business with the boss， 你一定要泡茶。It's like a, the talk over、like、tea. The, 对啊 ，I think in Japan it's talk over like shots, isn't it? <laughs> that's, what, that's what the movies tell me. Breaking 
a night out drinking, you mean? Right, yeah, because I, I heard that's the cultural thing is to go out with your boss and drink and don't stop until your boss stops drinking. Oh, in Chow, we call yeah. it. No, they, yeah, well, they, yeah, the Japanese are big drinkers. Right. Uh, <laughs> they don't, I don't think they readily have an equivalent of the uh, tea house type of thing, but what they do have is the um, the onsen. Do you know that? The uh, hot springs oh. hotel. Oh. Wen oh. Quan. Yeah, it's a completely different thing, but it reminds me of the same feeling of stepping away from the modern world and they've created these baths, right? Yeah. And it's dimly lit and maybe there is restful music and especially uh, when you soak in the, in the hot tub, you you can imagine that you've drifted back to traditional yeah. uh, Japan. So that's, I think, to me, I think that would be maybe the equivalent that I would point mm. out to. Uh, in terms of that feeling of, of preserving something of the ancient world or, or creating that feeling of having stepped back in time. Yeah. That's awesome. Are you, are you, are you, Just you laugh. I have one thing that I was going to ask you, but, yeah. but one of your videos answered the question for me. Oh, really? <laughs> I want to ask you guys, do the garbage trucks still make the music? <laughs> yeah, they do. They do. <laughs> and, <laughs> they do. And they do it during the podcast most, most of the time. <laughs> Yeah. So like, yeah. And it's still the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every time. I haven't changed it in 26 years. Nope. It must drive the people yeah. on the truck nuts. No? <laughs> it must drive them nuts. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's right. In Gao, in Gao Song, it's different. Yeah, it's a different song in, in Gao Song. I used to live in Gao Song when I first got here. Oh, I yeah. live in Gao Song. And it's a different song, but it's the still, still classical. But. Yeah, but you just know, oh, this is the song. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a question for you. First of all, Tom, how many years total have you been in Taiwan now? Six years. Mm, no, no. Six years. Wow, that's great. Yeah. And do you think that you're gonna you're gonna permanently settle down and live the rest of your life in Taiwan? That is a great question. <laughs> that's, um, a, that's a big question. That's a and Like it's a deep <laughs> question. Um, uh. We're going through the motions right now. We're going through. Uh, a difficult, we're having a difficult conversation about this because we're not huge fans of the Taiwanese education system for our children. We don't like the, yeah. the, the punishing, you must study, study for an exam, study for an exam, kill yourself for an exam kind of thing. <laughs> um, so we do prefer yeah. the, the Western style education for that. And it's quite expensive here if you want to go to a Western school. So we, yeah. we, we think we might go back to the UK for a while to, for education, but then come back here, I think. Um, for we, holiday. We, we're kind of, <laughs> I don't know, Mark. Why do you <laughs> ask me this question now? <laughs> Can't give you an answer. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I have lived the experience of the other way of of living in my native country, right? For you, it would be England, yeah, and trying to trying to preserve the Japanese experience, right? Uh, by way of regular travel. For us, it was once every two years. Yeah. Okay. Now, once you guys got three kids now, right? Yes, we do. That, that plane ticket stuff starts to get really expensive. Yeah, that's yeah. good. <laughs> this podcast needs to start. Um, if you ideas. lived in England and you wanted them to not lose touch with their Taiwanese culture, yeah, to routinely fly the family of five back to Taiwan for visits, that's tough. You know, it's expensive. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, what you, what you said is true. The, the two educational systems are completely different. And sometimes I do wonder, you know, the movie Sliding Doors, right? Yep. I wonder when if right. I had settled down in Japan, what would my kids be like right now? They would right. be, you know, they would have gone through the Japanese uh, educational system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, I'll never know. Maybe much more. I, I, I don't know. I don't know much about the Japanese education system. Is it very sort of past? Is it kind of very Eastern? Is it? So it's all coming back to me now. Is it similar? It is about the same. Is it about the same? Memorization. The teacher teaches, you just listen and take it in. Yeah. Yeah, mm. and learn from the book, 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 and book, study, study, pass the test. Yeah, they respect yes. teachers yes. a lot. The manners are different in Japan, the though. The, in Japan, you it's very, I want to say like like English, it's like <laughs> politeness is instilled in you, it seems, from culturally. 
Right. And I was going to actually say another thing about Chinese, that students of Chinese who haven't studied Japanese, you should be grateful that Chinese doesn't have these levels of politeness because Japanese, it's like a whole different language. Oh, is there, is there formal know? and informal as well as that kind of? Yeah. When you go to more formal levels of Japanese, everything changes. All of the main words like I and you and have and eat and wow. to know and uh, to go and all of this stuff to even to be all of those verbs change into mm. now, like I, when I first studied Chinese, I, they would teach you the formal version of ni is nin yeah, with nin, a little yeah. n at the end. Yeah. That was the last time. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. No one uses it really, do they? I mean, maybe. No, she, uh, uh, unless it's I've a never. business, in business way. Business, yeah, yeah maybe super like, formal. Yeah, like, yeah, uh, customer service, he will say, uh, 您好. 您好, mm. They're just, in, in, just only in that situation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so be grateful for that, students of Mandarin. You don't <laughs> have all this um, politeness stuff to, to, yeah. to worry about. And that's evidence of the two cultures, you know. Mm-hmm. I could quickly tell you, one of my friends... Um, from Taiwan, married into a Japanese family. And she lives, continues to live in Osaka, where she, you know, it had to sort of adjust to the Japanese culture uh, for the rest of her life, really. Right. But she invited me to Osaka for her wedding. Mm-hmm. And when I went to Osaka and they had the reception and we we're sitting at all the tables, you saw maybe 80% of the guests were Japanese and maybe 20% of the guests were from Taiwan, right? Her family, oh. maybe a few friends who made the trip to, oh to Osaka. God, it was so interesting the to see the difference. <laughs> yeah, amazing, I was going to say. Side by side. And the Japanese are so formal yeah. and polite. <laughs> You know, and then the Chinese, and they're like, "Oh, this is very good." Gabe, bye, bye, bye. You know, and then all of this, uh, yeah. and I just felt, wow. There's they, the Chinese really let their hair down, you know, and they and they don't get so uptight about things. That's hilarious. how you dressing code. I would love to see that. Mm. I think if there was a British and Japanese wedding, it would oh. just be like silence. <laughs> <laughs> just everyone or, or there'd be lots of sorry 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 thank you sorry from the english side and a lot of apologizing from the japanese side and respect no, you're right there there are a lot of parallels between uh english culture yeah. and uh japanese culture mm. yeah. apologize for everything uh, yeah, yeah, unless anyone misunderstands me i really do love uh, uh japanese culture and especially yeah. Yeah. and you can speak to this tom yeah. when you marry into the family mm-hmm. you really really connect with the culture yeah. in a way that you never will when you're a single dude like i was during my first trip to japan oh, yeah. um marrying into the family you get this depth of understanding well you, you get uh, you get the real yeah. culture don't you I, th- I think there's like a, yeah. a honeymoon period you get when you visit a country you get this honeymoon period of, oh, of what, how bad. this rose-tinted yeah. view of what the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, but in every culture every culture has their interesting bits and bad yeah. and good stuff and you only really get it when you marry into the you know so you'll know way more about japanese culture than me if i went to visit for six months or something because i could come out thinking oh, yeah, it sort of depends on the family and i sure. think you know uh, I gather from what you say, Tom, that you, the family you've married in is married into is very similar to the Japanese family that I've married into in that they completely approve of uh, the marriage and mm-hmm. love having me as part of everything. And uh, I feel like I hit the jackpot, you know, marrying this family that welcomed me so warmly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and like one time when we were having a drink at dinner, uh, my wife's uh, father, my father-in-law said, you know, Mark, I, I've, I can talk to you in a way that I can't even talk to my own boys, you know? Uh, and I was like, wow, that really, uh, that really means something to me. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Awesome to hear. Yeah, very good. Listen, an hour and a half now. Let's not keep it, but kids. <laughs> look, look, let's do part two, okay? We can do part two in the future. How? <laughs> Okay. Well, we'll schedule another one sometime. But it, you know, I'm really glad that we did this, and it, it really did allow me 
a, a, a special treat of, of returning to Taiwan in my mind almost. Yeah. Do, do you have anything that you wanted to tell people about that you've got coming up or anything? Um, well, I'll tell you actually, now that you mention it, yep. I'm in the very, very early stages and this is, um, uh, you are the first people to, to hear about this or the first people to put this out into the world. Exclusive. <laughs> I am in the very early stages of creating a graphic novel uh, story, a fictional story that will be set in Taiwan. <gasps> oh, cool. And so, yeah, that's part of this and part of why I found your podcast is I'm Doing some trying to familiarize myself. And like when I asked you about the Chinese tea houses, mm-hmm. Part of it was like, I want to have a scene in the story where he goes to a Chinese tea house. But then I thought, do they still exist? I don't yeah, know. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I'm glad I got to ask you that. And you've helped me uh, with this story that I'm working on. Hey, listen, that's super exciting. Uh, if you need some uh, pictures or whatever you want, give us a shout and we, yeah. can, we can always go out and um, take some for you and help you out with your stuff. May one tea. You have, yeah. you have friends now in uh, Taiwan, <laughs> based here in Taichung. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I really hope someday that uh, I can make a trip. Maybe my wife and I uh, someday can make a trip to Taiwan, and uh, we'll definitely. Uh, yeah, that would be super cool. You know, one, one last thing that I loved about uh, Taiwan was learning how to make the uh, shui jiao. Oh, uh, dumplings. Uh, Gyoza, and they they have like a party, right? And you'll bring everyone together, and you all you all fold the shui jiao. Mm. Uh, Mine is terrible. Mine is terrible. I would. Uh, <laughs> how to do that early on in Taiwan. And I never forgot. Mm. And to this day, when we make uh, gyoza, the, the, the Japanese say, is, oh. I guess it would be jian, jia, jian jiao. Oh, is that jian right? Jian jiao, right? Oh. That I'm, I'm in charge of the folding of the uh-huh. uh, jian jiao. And, uh, and my wife is always complimenting me. The, the my technique is good. Ooh. I was, yes, because I had Taiwan the Lao Shi Jiao. Oh bang oh Yeah, you hold on. I derailed things. We were winding down the conversation. But definitely it's great to know that that I know you guys and I, yeah. I do hope that uh we I can make a trip back to Taiwan someday. Oh, we'd love that. Uh, yeah, and the offer, the offer is real. If you need any uh, research stuff done, please give yeah. us a shout because it's mm. super interesting that you're doing it and it's set in Taiwan. <clears throat> um, you know what I'm thinking of doing? I think I want to invent a town that doesn't exist. Nice. And then I am free to make my ideal version of it. Taiwan town, but I want it to be, I don't want it to be Taipei. I want it to be small town, John, kind of like Zhanghua. Uh, and, and I want the rice fields and I want that kind of wonderful Very small town feeling of, uh, of, so yeah, I think I'm going to give myself a free hand, but it, it'll, it'll probably be a lot like John Hua. <laughs> mm, is, is the, is the main character Taiwanese? No, the main character is going to be an American, uh, high school boy. Okay. Who had a relatively brief experience in Taiwan. Okay. Like his brother is living there doing like what you, Tom, do and what I used to do, teaching, teaching English. English right? yeah. but I want to tell it from the point of view of someone who's never been to Taiwan before and is sort of thrown into the world of Taiwan on his own. Interesting. Wow. How cute. Day. How cute. And it, it How cute. Fun. Mm. It sounds How awesome. Um, so people can find you, markrelly.com. Well, you know, it's probably best to give the YouTube, youtube.com slash Mark Crowley. Yeah, you can't be missed very much. You, you do have quite a large YouTube, I found. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got lucky. I got lucky with that. That caught me by and, surprise. Um, I actually have on YouTube, if anyone's interested, mm. I have done these videos that show my old sketchbooks of Taiwan. They're awesome. So if you, yeah. If you went to my channel and, and searched, you know, Taiwan sketchbook or something like that, yeah. it, there's probably three or four different videos that show those drawings that I did. Yeah. And listen, I'm going to say it for you actually, because I know you don't, it's fine. So Mark obviously has, has a YouTube channel. He teaches people how to draw and, and goes over a lot of different stuff. And, and some of the fa- stuff, I mean, I'm very interested in art anyway, because I do, I do graphic design stuff. Mm. Um, 
less sketch stuff, but yeah. still very interested in, in, in what you're talking about. And, um, Mark's got a bunch of videos on how to draw stuff, which is super awesome, but also stuff about story, which I'm also very interested mm. in, um, having, creating these silly little things and filming stuff and making short movies and stuff. So, uh, you talk about a lot about story and making mistakes in stories and how to create good stories yeah. and, you know, and this kind of stuff. But it's really, really interesting. So anyone who's listening out there, who's sure. interested in the, in that kind of side of life, please visit uh, youtube.com forward slash Mark Crilly. We'll put all the links anyway in, in all of the places that you'd expect Down to find them. Please mm. uh, go Thank and, and do that. No, no, not that you need the help, really. I mean, you've done you've done pretty well on your own there. We recommend good <laughs> things. Yeah, damn right. Are. But it, it's been an absolute honor and a privilege to speak to you. Shishin, and shishin. and even though it feels really, even though it's felt really, you know, it's felt really short. To be fair, like it's gone so quickly. It's a bit annoying. Really, but <laughs> we'll try and do part two if and when you have time. Um, yeah. We're going to play some music now, just so you know. It's the outro music. I don't know if you remember it. Um, yeah. uh, but you can stay on if you, if you don't mind, just for a couple of minutes afterwards. Sure. Oh, cool. All right. Uh, uh, guys, if you want to get in contact with us, you certainly can. Uh, where can they get in contact with us? You certainly do. We do do private lessons. We do do group lessons. We do do free lessons. Come to mandarinmonkey.com to find out more. 是的,或者是如果你们想要支持我们的广播,你们喜欢我们的广播,你们可以到patreon.com forward slash Mandarin Monkey. Mm-hmm. 好啦,谢谢你们收听,谢谢你们收看,谢谢Mark来到我们的广播,谢谢大家。谢谢。拜拜。我们下次见喽。拜拜。拜拜。